William Craig III. And <laughs> we want to welcome you back. Um, we hope that you're enjoying the program because we yes. sure are enjoying producing this program for you. Indeed. We sit down and we have so many ideas, we can't get them all out at the same time. We can't get them all out at the time that we really want to produce them. And those are just her ideas. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. I tr and I mean, we have a team of tenants that are willing and ready to bring you all types of good health tips. So we do thank you for joining us every week, and uh, we're going to make this worthwhile for you. Indeed. But you know, tonight is uh, financial health. That's me, yeah. That's me, financial health. And I'm going to, I teach the money tips and the financial planning, things like that. And so I wanted to start this program off in the first half and just give uh, our audience an idea of some of the things that we've done with financial health oh, okay. before we actually get into the segment. Sounds great. And the segment tonight is Don't Kick Your Assets to the Curb. And I'm going to explain that to them. All right, I <laughs> hope so. But, Mike, if you could put up that first slide. Thank you so much. Okay, a couple of weeks ago, or uh, rather a couple of months ago, I was asking everyone to take a look at their personal vision okay. and to make sure that they had a personal vision, mm -hmm. a reason to get up in the mornings, yes. you know, and to also document what their goal is. Okay, so you've got your personal vision, which is your your vision of your future, and then you have your goals, how you're going to step through to make that happen. Gotcha. Um, but if you take a look at this slide, this, I'm going to tell you some stories, right? Right out of these pictures, when we were down at Salvation Army, and William, I know you'll remember some of this because you mm -hmm. were participating in this with me. Yes. When we were down at Salvation Army, there were some um, people who had some concerns, and they weren't sure if they had a vision for their life because they were in rehabilitation, mm -hmm. you know? Um, they didn't have a home to go to. They were right. strung out on drugs for quite some time. They, they had no hope whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And when we took the program down there and we were talking to them about personal vision and goals, some of them would come to us and they would say, you know, like one gentleman said that I am interested and just um, being able to return to my job and be able to save enough so that I can retire because I'm too old for this. Wow. And I was like, okay, I agree. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're too old for this. But let's take a look at what you're asking for. If that is your vision, if that's what you get up in the morning for, mm -hmm. then let's make that vision come to reality. So we introduced to him the spending plan, which is what we're going to be teaching tonight. And in that spending plan, we talked about, oh, no, we're still at the first one, Mike. In that spending plan, we were talking about missing money. Okay. And I told them that we were, would be able to go to a, a missingmoney.com website, put in their oh, right, social right, and right. their name, right. and it would pop up if it was there. Correct. Well, there were 15 people who took us at our word, and when I returned that next week, um, there he was. Mm -hmm. And I verified his social, verified his name, asked him if he worked for that company. Right. The company had set up a pension plan. About he had been working with that company for about 15, 20 years. Mm -hmm. Didn't know that they were taking money out of his check for a pension plan. He felt so at ease that now he can go home. And if he chose not to go to that so home, he had a he, place he to is. go. Yeah. Right. He, he didn't want to talk anymore about that money. <laughs> he didn't want to talk about how he was not going to share that money with his wife. Okay, no. That is his prerogative. But we also talked to the um, clients about um, 
getting a job during the rehab and we were doing their resume right. and right. we did enough resumes right. and I think I mentioned that early on that they decide some of them decided that they were not going back to rehabilitation they exactly. donned the suit exactly. took that resume t- down to where they used to work or a vicinity close by and mm-hmm. got hired because of that because they could not believe that they did all of that in their career it's right. here it's up there all you got to do is put it down on paper and that vision starts unfolding of what you are destined to walk in we also had some women who had never slept in a bed before they were not they were just on the street they were still at the first slide they're on the street and they were very concerned that they were losing their children Mm -hmm. they lost their home they Mm -hmm. they they didn't know where they were going but we brought down the housing authority the housing administration someone came in and gave them a lecture on where to go when they get out of the vicinity brand new apartment complexes that were going up and they were going to be the first to get registered yeah as a matter of fact, they didn't even wait until they got out. They came of down course. to the center and helped them fill out the papers. So he's itching to get to the next slide, so let's get to the next slide. We took the program into faith-based organizations. Yes, you did. Yeah, and they, these women did not have as many challenges, but they still had you know, concerns about what's my, my vision, what's my goal, why am I even here? You know, right. Am I even valued or worth anything? And so out of that, some of them were able to decide, yes, um, I do have a vision. I do have a reason to get up in the morning. But then there were some that said, ah, it's, I'm, it's not coming. Right. I, I don't get it yet. And so th- not a problem. It will hit you in the middle of the night. It will wake you from your sleep that this is the purpose that you have been made for. Right. And so some of them had decided that, you know, I, one in particular, I want to buy a home. I want to own a home. Mm-hmm. And she didn't know how she was going to do that. Mm-hmm. She didn't see where the money was going to come from. Mm-hmm. And I met with her offsite, and we sat for two hours, and we went through her spending plan and her income and her outgoing and all of that. Right. And I showed her, here it is, right here. This is how you're going to buy a home. Right. She was a uh, teacher. So there was money for teachers. She uh, was moving into or looking at the mortgagers and looking at the um, home builders. They had programs out there. Mm-hmm. The, the sh- short story, yes. 11 months later, 11 got months. a phone call from her and said, I just wanted to let you know, I didn't believe you then, but I believe you now because I just settled on my yeah. home. And it is a beautiful home. It is gorgeous. It is a gorgeous, it is gorgeous home. home. Yes. And uh, she didn't have to pay a dime at settlement. All those programs that she did the research on, she was able to come back. It was like eight dollars, wasn't it? It was very little, (laughs) ridiculously low. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) But then there were um, there was a woman who I met um, after the program had graduated. She wanted to give me something to Mm -hmm. thank me for this, and okay, fine. So I rode up, and she was sitting in a beautiful Chrysler SUV. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was gorgeous, and it was champagne colored too. Mm -hmm. I said, "What is this? Where'd you get this from?" She said, "Well, what?" you taught me um, how to leverage income Mm -hmm. and how to leverage assets Mm -hmm. without having to create all this new money. She said, I was able to go out and buy the the vehicle of my dream. She said, I always wanted it. She said, Tracy, it's not new either. I said, Mm -hmm. okay, that's good. You're smart now. She went to an auction. Mm. and bid it on a $54,000 car and got it for $19,000, fully loaded. Can you say deal? Fully loaded, yes, yes. Big deal. And so um, I can go on and on and and talk to you about this, but what I want to say to you is that don't don't get rid of your dreams. Don't stop dreaming. Continue to dream. And when you dream, dream big because it will happen. Right now, we got all of this noise in our head. We yes. can't think yes. because we're in debt and we think we're never going to get out of this debt. Mm-hmm. These women came into this eight week class thinking the same thing. Mm-hmm. There was one woman that came in and she had fled her home, a domestic abusive home, mm-hmm. fled her home, went down the road to an, an apartment complex and asked, Do you have anything wow. for me? And he said, I got one apartment left, you can have it. That evening, she registered and came into the class. She looked like life had dealt her a horrible thing. Sure. When we finished with her, and we graduated her eight weeks later, and we put the pearl necklace around her, I could not tell the... Wow. 
her face just glowed. Sure. There was no worry. I mean, it was like the peace of God just settled in her life. She knew exactly where she was going, what she was going to do, how to budget for it, what kind of job she needed in order to take care of her children. Right. I mean, it was a perfect, perfect thing. Right. And so don't stop dreaming. We're talking to you about goals and, and destiny and spending and money, and you're saying, well, I don't have any of that. I'm trying to teach you how to go get it, right. how to find it. I mean, it's right there in front of you and I'm going to show you tonight when we talk about your assets so if you could put up the next slide Mike just to go over and and actually the one after that about setting the goals setting the short-term goals and the midterm goals and the long-term goals just making sure that you have something documented because if you don't write it down if you don't say it to yourself then it's not going to become a reality you're going to forget about it or think that you can't achieve it what you're looking at right now is my goal I have a, go a short-term goal that I want to teach financial planning via live conference call. All right. Mm -hmm. And my midterm goal is that I want to take that live conference call and I want to make it um, automated. Okay. And, and I want to do that by September. So I want to have the live conference call by January, right. automated by September. And my long-term goal by January 2016, that call is now a webinar. Okay. And it's a tele-summit call. And I don't even have to sit there anymore. You can dial in 724-365 and get this message, that financial management good. message. So I look at how I'm going to break that down. These are my high-level action steps. I'm going to locate a conference call product or service that will host at least 50 plus callers with a recording feature. Already done. Okay. I already found one that helps 200 people uh, with wait, a recording wait, wait. feature. I'm going to conduct market research to purchase an online scheduling program having payment receipt capability. I'm not going to be cashing anybody out. I'm going to let the system do that. Mm -hmm. I've already mm -hmm. found one and I've actually loaded the class in and put the cost to it and it's ready to go. I'm going to design an attractive landing page to automatically enroll from cradle to grave. That means from the first time you click on that website to read about it and to the end where you make the payment and it sends you a thank you notice, that is cradle to grave. And mm -hmm. William, you're going to help me with that, right? Yes, ma'am. Because you did that before yes, on this program. Yes, ma'am. And the last thing is I'm going to partner with an editor for creation and delivery of training material and products. I have already, already completed my ebook, my very first ebook. Fantastic. It will be offered for free. I just need to tighten it up. And our editor is our very own Jacqueline Height. I'm giving you that shout out, girl. I'm giving you that shout out. So um, she's going to be working with me to finalize Fantastic. all the ebooks, all the workbooks, all the everything for this program. Fantastic. So that is my goal. That's my vision. That is what I'm focused on for the next year or so. But if you look at the next slide, now I've given you some homework over the past couple of months. And in that homework, I asked you to create a financial binder. And the first tab of the binder was to list your goal. This is what your, um, your vision, your future vision is going to be. And um, document that in your binder. The second tab was to handle your personal directory. And you know what is an interesting story coming out of Salvation Army that has to do with this personal directory. Well, what in the world does a personal directory, my friends, my family members, all of that, getting the socials and things like, what does right. that have to do with financial management? Do you remember the young woman who told us that she was born in the house in rural New York and uh, there was no midwife, there was no doctor. Mm. And so her, it was just her mother and her aunt, and her aunt named her, and her aunt was caring for her. And when the mother got upset with the aunt, the mother snatched the baby and left and raised her someplace else under a different name. Wow. And she said, all I want to know is what my name is. Wow. I just want yeah. a copy of my birth certificate so I'll know who I am. And so we sat down and we contacted New York Vital Statistics. Mm -hmm. We filled out the paperwork for her. We paid the, the cost because it, it meant nothing. And right. then she got a, a letter a couple of weeks later and said, here's a copy of your birth certificate. And oh, by the way, this is your name. Right. So when you have your personal directory all together, all of that stuff is in there. Now she knows who she is. She can go out and, and really make a difference in life. Sure. But your professional directory also 
um, determines who has your stuff, your lawyer, your doctor, your um, tax okay. person. Okay. All of that stuff is necessary. So those are the three tabs that we asked you to take a look at. So again, this is a work in pro pro progress. It's not going to happen overnight. So mm -hmm. I don't want you to get frustrated if you don't have it together. I don't want you to think that you have to be so eloquent with it and, and so high fashion with it. No, you can get one of those black and white um, little tabs that we had in back in the day in school. Books. Yeah, that's it. That's right. Okay. But so we know how them. old you are. <laughs> <laughs> I've read about it. <laughs> get one of those and just start writing things down. And, and I want you to know that you can email us and, and write us at any time. And as a matter of fact, the email address is mentorme411 at gmail.com. If you can't get to the website, just shoot us an email and talk to us about your vision and your dreams because we do want to hear about it. We want to work with you. It happens. Good things, yes. beautiful things can happen for right. you. It doesn't matter what you've done or what you've been through. It can happen to you. So I've got a song, a video, of course. But of course. For you. And this is our dedication to you. It's Miss Yolanda Adams singing mm -hmm. Never Give Up. Yes. Oh, artist. <laughs> Here is Electra recording artist Yolanda Adams.
as soon as I saw Cece introducing Yolanda, it uh, dug my memory, and I was at that concert at the White House, okay. uh, part of a series that presidents past have done called Gospel at the White House. And indeed, it was a magnificent evening. Mm. And just to be able to go to uh, the people's house, if you will, and experience my faith in, in a, a very special way it was just, it, it was one of those moments that I'll never forget. Did you ever dream you would go and sit there? As, as a, actually, as a little kid in Harlem, I did dream that okay. I would be at the White House. Uh, <laughs> I, and since you, since you went there, uh, as a kid, actually, my dream was to become president. I okay. actually believed that I could be president and uh, was a page in the Senate for Senator That's, Jacob Javits yeah. and uh, followed that path for a little while until I just felt the political game was really not for me. Mm -hmm. There were things, you know, it's kind of like seeing behind the curtain and uh, a lot of things were revealed to me that didn't jive with what I felt was mm -hmm. the way I wanted to really live right. my life because uh, part of part of that path was to become an ambassador and mm -hmm. and uh, and I can see that yeah and and, and, and in some ways I am still an ambassador <laughs> that's <But> right <laughs> nonetheless um, I, I I basically decided that I could do more good by going into the business world and and switched from political science to business administration and the that's rest why is you're sitting here. That's yes, why I'm sitting exactly. here today. Indeed. Exactly. Um, well, we're going to get into our segment very quickly because we do have our fashionistas here. Oh, yes. Oh, we yeah. Do. They're going to get us ready for Christmas. And I talk to them. I'm getting my tips in now. Okay. So let's get to the slide. Um, don't kick your assets to the curb. Well, what's an asset? Assets are resources that you own that are convertible to cash. Mm -hmm. So an asset could be an investment account that you have. Right. Um, it could be a bank account with a little bit of money, not a negative balance, a little bit of money in it. <laughs> I, I, I heard a story about a woman whose uh, bank account was so bad, she went to another bank and opened an account just so she'd have a new balance. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> And it had to be a woman, huh? Well, uh, the, <laughs> we're going to talk after this. <laughs> but it could be also a vehicle that's paid for, right. um, jewelry that you wear that you can sell. Anything that is a commodity that you can turn around and sell, it becomes an asset. Next slide, please. So if we have an asset, mm -hmm. a positive, we must have a negative, which yes. is a liability. Liability. So those liabilities are obligations that you have to pay for a product or service, um, and it's transferred uh, from an asset or from the use of an asset into cash. And so when we're looking at commodity, we're looking at like a balance on your mortgage mm -hmm. for those that still owe on your house. Right. We're also looking at any business expenses and loans, and that goes for those um, co-signer loans as well. Okay, right. so we're going to have a discussion about co-signer loans and any property taxes. Anything that you owe is a liability. Okay. Next slide. When we look at your net worth, we're taking the value of all your assets, the things that you own, that you can put a dollar figure to, mm -hmm. and we're subtracting them from all of your liabilities, the things that you owe. Right. And so that difference then becomes your net worth. Okay. For example, For example. You, know, you got $100,000 in assets. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, you think you're rich, huh? <laughs> but Until. Here you go, $75,000 worth of liabilities. Oh, no, that's not good. So your net worth is $25,000. Mm -hmm. So I want you to think about all of your assets, all of your liabilities, and we're going to go through um, examples of how to, to, to really determine your net worth. So if you had to sell your assets today, your assets, right. would you know how much your assets are worth? Mm -hmm. Do you know what you actually have in your hands right now in your home? And I bet you you have some assets that are of value. Okay. For example, I had a big old jar of pennies. All righty. All kinds of pennies I had collected over the years. And then I took a chance and just looked at the pennies to see the age of them. Okay. Because I had read an article that true copper, um, uh, yeah, and the pennies right, were right. during a different, uh, right. 
Yes. We don't use copper anymore. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That makes them very valuable. Mm -hmm. And so when I found the pennies and I looked at the year of these pennies, do you know I had almost a half a jar of those pennies? I thought you were going to say half a million. No. <laughs> <laughs> would I be sitting here? I, I would hope so. <laughs> oh, that's right. I do love well, you. I wouldn't give this message. The truth comes out. <laughs> <laughs> oh my but I didn't realize what I had until I looked in my hands or I great. looked around me to determine that's a value that's great I looked at silver coins okay. a half a dollar same deal know, yes silver. the Susan B Anthony's you okay. know all of those the two dollar bills mm -hmm. I, I'm not going to say I still have them I'll say they're in a security box okay, okay. <laughs> let's get to the next slide please <laughs> So then if we have um, assets and liabilities and right. we can put our hands on those tangible things, then right. what are intangible assets? Mm, great question. Those are the non-physical assets that have just as much value, if not more. All right. Can you think Get of excited. an intangible asset? An idea. Oh, yes, exactly. <laughs> oh, there he goes with that bail. <laughs> exactly, particularly if it's an idea that's going to save the company money or, or save you some money. Correct. That's an asset right there. Mm -hmm. Your ability to sing, your ability to paint or play mm -hmm. a musical instrument, those mm -hmm. are intangible assets. Can't touch it. That's right. But it's real. Mm -hmm. And it has value. It has value. And all you have to do is sit down and now compose that asset right. and um, channel it, and you can get some money Definitely. from having that yeah, asset. It's so funny. I was thinking about this the other day, that Michael Jackson had bought the uh, Beatles, the rights to the Beatles songs. Uh, and, and the bottom line is that was something that he was actually able to, to leave to will to his children yes, so yes. here you know paul mccartney writes a song years and years ago it becomes a number one hit michael jackson buys the rights to own the song mm -hmm. and so every time the song is played there are royalties that's that are right. paid that's right and yet here some you know many years later that song is still in play mm -hmm. and because I own the rights, or in this case, Michael Jackson bought the rights. His children can still reap the That's benefits right. years later from that one song. Wow. That's amazing. Wow. What an asset. What an mm -hmm. asset. Next slide, please. So this is the fourth thing that I want you to build into your financial binder, that you are gifted and talented and that your gifts and your talents give you the capability to earn more income. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't earn the income, it's because you're either not tapping into the gift and the talent, mm -hmm. or you just simply don't believe. So let's set that all of that aside now. You know that you have an intangible asset. It could be writing. Mm -hmm. um, it could be um, speaking. speaking. I mean, anything like that can earn you extra money. I need you to put that fourth tab in your binder and list your gifts and your talents. These are things that people told you you're good at. You, you know you're good at. You don't even you really need any effort whatsoever to do that. Your ability to cook. And that's right. That's right. Exactly. So let's get to the next slide. So now then, knowing that we have assets, tangible, intangible assets, and we have liabilities as well, let's take a look at your spending plan. Is your spending plan at risk? The spending plan is a sample strategy for making the most of your money and reaching your financial goals. It's commonly known as a budget. Uh -huh. A really good spending plan will allow you to spend more, uh, rather, not. will not allow you there to spend you more money than you have, will ensure your bills get paid, and will help you save, save, save money. That's a good spending plan. So if you can think about right now, do you even have a budget or a spending plan? If you don't, then you're pretty much living paycheck to paycheck. Right. Uh, you're trying to figure out in your head what you owe, right. and you're going to miss something in the process. So next slide, please. When you create your spending plan, what you want to write down, you don't need to do anything fancy right now, even in that journal with the ledger. All you need to do is just write down exactly what you're paying out to. 
So if we're looking at property, if you've got rent or mortgage or condo fees, maintenance fees, gardening, things like that, mm -hmm. write those down and put the dollar figure beside it so that you know exactly what you're paying. And if you want, then spread it out January through December and put that dollar figure, if it's firm fixed, if it is not changing, put it under those months so you can see that. Because we're going to tally all of it up in the end. Also coming out of that property are your utility bills, like your gas, oil, electric, your right. internet. Don't forget the internet and the cable and, and the telephone. They won't let us forget. No, they won't. <laughs> they really won't. <laughs> so write all of that down, too. A good spending plan will start asking you questions. Why, are you, why do you have this? Mm -hmm. why, why is this necessary? Mm -hmm. Look at your food. Do you buy regular groceries or are you the organic kind? Your right. spending plan will ask you why are you buying organic food? Okay. I mean, you have a special diet, um, maybe due to illness. Uh, if you're going to the restaurant, are you going to high-end restaurants with low-end funds? Mm. You know, why are you doing that? The, your spending plan is going to ask you those questions about medical and about transportation as well. But your spending plan will also look at your credit card payments, your nonprofit dona donations, and in our kingdom, we call it tithing and offering and alms. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's going to look at your retirement account, child support, alimony, just uh, the list goes on. Yes, you want to write them all down and put the dollar figure beside it because you got to know where your money's going. Turn, next slide, please. So this is the fifth tab that's going into your financial binder. After you list all of your debts and your payouts, then you also want to list those things that are the income. And maybe you don't pay child support, you're the recipient of child support or alimony. You're working, whether it's a part-time job or freelance or full-time job, you mm -hmm. want to bring that money to this as well because what are we trying to do? We're trying to look at your liabilities Minus your your assets, um, your assets. Minus your liabilities. In order to get your net, net worth. worth. Okay. And net worth, we can break it down by the month. We can break it down by the year, et cetera. So create that fifth plat, um, tab in your financial binder so that you can get a good view of what your spending is like. Mm -hmm. And then next month when we come together, we're going to talk about lions, tigers, and bears. Oh, oh my. my. Yes. We're going to talk about your vendors. Now, how do you choose your partners? Because choosing your partners is based on what your spending plan looks like. I mean, okay. you can't go to the grocery store high end and buy something. Or well, why would you do that if right around the corner there's a lower end grocery store that's selling the same product? I mean, so. For a better price. Yes, right. yes. We're going to look at all of that. We're going to teach you how to talk to your vendors because there have been many times I've walked into electronic stores, mm -hmm. big screen TVs or stereos, and I, is that the best price you can give me? Right. And if he says, well, no, okay, then let's talk because gotcha. I'm not paying that. You know, gotcha. There are a lot of things. Your spending plan is also going to tell you what your debt looks like so that when we start um, contacting the debtors, mm -hmm. we'll know how much we can spend, how much we can tell them we're going to pay them because some of them will try and scare the bejesus out of you. Yes. Again, they cannot do that. We're going to talk about that. there's no such thing as bejesus. <laughs> They'll try and frighten you. Um, <laughs> so we're going to talk, talk to mm -hmm. you about what you can spend, what you can commit to because right. your word is is you it's all about you and so you don't want to tell lies or fabs and things like that we're going to teach you or so stay that you know. sidetracked too long yeah and, and then many but of us have been there mm -hmm. don't run from the phone calls right. you know don't tear up the letters we're all of that we're going to face it right. head on lions tigers and bears oh my oh my we're going to talk about that next month fantastic okay. something wonderful to look forward to yes so it yes. sounds like freedom's coming soon yes it, it really is it really is oh my gosh they all in, all the lessons intertwine they all do and they start with that financial binder so get your finance your spending plan together and let's get together next month right. and talk about this Sounds great. but we have the fat uh, the fashionistas, fashionistas here. Nice. Yes, yes, we yes, yes. We gotta get yes. some special music for the fashionistas. Well, actually, we did choose something <gasps> for them. Here we them. go. <laughs> what, what a wonderful idea. What an asset I am. So, Mike, do we have that <laughs> that little tune? Ready? Woo! All right. Yes! Woo! 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 Yes! Courtney and Danae are here with us, our very own Mentor, uh, mentor Me Memorable Moments 
fashionistas. So what are you going to be talking about us today? Well, today it's gifting. We're getting close to the holidays. Alrighty. This is the time where people do stuff they're not supposed to do. They buy people who they don't like things they don't need to get them. We're gonna, you know, <laughs> <laughs> this is like okay. this is what we're we're here to sort of talk you down and give you some good ideas, some good tips. So okay. Talk you down. Before okay. you head talk you down. into <laughs> your local department store and do too much. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and I and I shared uh, before the show. Uh, Forbes magazine t- says that approximately 40% of the people are actually admitting that they are pressured Don't into know. overspending for oh, the holidays. No. And admitting? How is that possible? It's cute, but we know it's probably closer to 50 or 60%. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of Joneses more. that people are trying to <laughs> okay. keep up with. I heard have the Joneses nipple. were broke. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Apparently, they've all been in bank um, rupsy court recently. Mm-hmm. So okay. It's, you know. So, we're, you know, we're going to try to bring some, you know, method to the madness, mm-hmm. help people figure some things out. So we want to start off with ask. Ask. Ask ah. people what they want. People, that's a huge one that people miss for obvious reasons. And instead of, mm. you, you know, I, I, I say ask because... I have a friend who years ago dated a guy, and the guy, her birthday was coming around, she was really excited, um, and she said to him, he asked her, and she said, I wanna go to this new restaurant in the city. And his, but she's a person who has one of the most serious handbag shoe collections of, I know, like Dior, uh, Lavon, you name the brand, she has pieces that are like crazy. Um, and so he went out and took it upon himself to buy her a shoe and a handbag. After she told this person, do not buy me a shoe and a handbag. I want to go to a restaurant. Okay. Needless to say, they oh. are not together. Oh that my was gosh. not going to happen. Somebody is a poor listener. Uh-huh. <laughs> the first part of that is, and it wasn't the defining factor, but the first part of that is, why don't you just ask and do what you were asked to do? Mm-hmm. So I ask you know, it might not be as severe as you think it is. Maybe they don't want a Chanel handbag. Right. But that's yeah. a great point. And, I, and I, I learned that lesson many years ago as well. <laughs> when you're giving gifts, uh, to, when, you, when you're giving uh, at certain times, you can certainly just give a gift because it comes from your heart. But there are certain times when it is best to ask the individual mm-hmm. what they would like. Mm-hmm. And if they tell you, then you should by all means do everything within your power to give them. You know what I try and do throughout the year, listen to what they like and what they want. Again, same principle Mm -hmm. because they're telling you what they want. Right. I can't ask. I, I, I like the element of oh, surprise. No, I do. No. I like you the bowls the and everything. Though, <laughs> no, I listen very well. Okay. I hit it. I do. We'll see. So then the second part of that mm-hmm. is listen. So when somebody asks you mm-hmm. for apples, they want apples. They didn't want oranges. See? They didn't want pears. <laughs> Nobody asked for kumquats. Right. You know, get the person what they or do do something that's close to what they said. They said I want a cashmere sweater you can't afford a cashmere sweater and you can find deals and maybe find a cashmere sweater for a good price but if you just so happen not to be able to you can always get them a merino wool sweater that won't cost you as much but is nice and it feels soft Mm -hmm. or a cashmere blend yeah just get you know like there's options in there like but if somebody says this is what i want you don't get them a raincoat yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> needless to say, <laughs> you know, and hopefully the person who's being asked is keeping in mind who they're talking to. Mm. So they're not asking for, you know, pennies from heaven mm-hmm. and they know you barely, barely have a nickel to spend. Okay. And so, you know, hopefully that's the other side of it. They're being realistic when they talk to you about this. But, you know, I just listen. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Great points. And it, um, okay, and then, you know, practical isn't bad. Um, I don't think that people get that. I think sometimes people think practical is boring, but when somebody really needs something, practical sometimes is a lifesaver. Mm-hmm. Yes. I, when I was in college, a really good, my one of my roommates, 
needed a hat, a, a, a scarf, and gloves. Right. We were going to school in Brooklyn, New York. Anybody who knows anything about New Woo-hoo. York winter Woo-hoo. knows it is not a game. Not at all. And that particular year, it snowed, it rained, it snowed, it rained. So we were on piles upon piles of ice. Mm-hmm. You know, well, welcome and, to New York. And so okay. it was, you know, it was, and she didn't have gloves. She didn't have a hat. She needed, you know, all of those necessities. Right. And her boyfriend, sweet guy that he was, that's the first thing he ran out and got and brought from Harlem down to Brooklyn and then went home in New Jersey, right. you know, to make sure she was covered. And to me, that practical thing was so much more special than him going and buying her a piece of jewelry that she's going to lose. Right. Okay. And so, right. yeah, practical is not a bad idea to me at all, especially if you know somebody really needed something. Mm-hmm. And um, this is actually goes back to something Tracy was saying, play detective. Um, if you can, if you can get access or gain access to um, what people like, like on their Instagram or on their um, Facebook page, on their um, Pinterest, a lot of times that's sort of a little clue into you know where where to head. Um, Mm -hmm. in terms of gifting, you know, if they really love something that Kim Kardashian carries, obviously she carries a lot of very expensive things, but if you see an Hermes bag that sort of, if you see a bag that sort of reminds you of an Hermes bag she carries, then you know that sort of, maybe this person may like something like that, Mm -hmm. you know, not the $20,000 version of it necessarily. Mm -hmm. Okay. But yeah, pay attention to those clues. Yeah. Nonverbal clues. Well, mm-hmm. and just, yeah, I mean, you know, sometimes if some every time you see somebody wearing a gold piece of jewelry, maybe they really enjoy gold. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, That's right, yeah. You know, yes. you know, every time you see them, they have a new pair of shoes on, maybe a gift card to a shoe company yes. isn't a bad idea. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, because that's their sort of thing. Mm-hmm. So Great. Practical. Okay, yeah. So our next tip would be, it's the thought that counts, obviously. Um don't get confused. Remember what the real reason for the season is. Um, but to get as many gifts as possible? <laughs> <laughs> no, mm-hmm. that's not it. Okay. You. Oh, okay. But it's, it's always the thought that counts. So mm-hmm. as much as you may want whatever the hot item is, if you don't get it, you'll be okay. Just yeah. be thankful that the person thought about you and be happy with you. Yeah. What do that. I always say? You're still breathing. You're okay. okay. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> you, you made it. That's a tweet it's going right to be all there. right. You're still breathing. You're, You're okay. okay. Tweet you can tweet that. that. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag mentor me memorable. <laughs> okay. Next tip. Know your budget. Um, yes. Sort of to piggyback off of what we were just speaking about. Right. You're, you're planning your budget. Know your budget. Don't feel pressured. We all do right. to feel. We feel the pressure to overspend, but really, just stick to your guns and set the limit and don't go over it. You don't want to start the new year off in debt. Mm-hmm. Negative so. net worth. Negative net worth. Negative You're not impressing network. anybody if you if you've lost your car in mm-hmm. January because it's been repoed. So nobody's impressed by that. But I think right. you get, like, at least three months to miss, and then so. Oh no, William. Well, then, <laughs> not yeah. on my April. segment. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's very important to know your budget and stick to it. And, you know, nowadays, layaway has come back around. Yes. Yeah, there are a lot of retailers who are offering layaway as an option. It's great for you to help you manage your money. You can plan mm-hmm. ahead, pay it mm-hmm. off in your mm-hmm. month, you know. I love it. Yeah. Love your, it. Um, however, what the payment plan is. Mm-hmm. And it helps you to stay on track with the finances. Mm-hmm. So definitely mm-hmm. utilize mm-hmm. layaway. That is definitely an option that has come back around Mm -hmm. yeah I think it's a smart option too for sure okay next one re-gifting and trading Uh so you got that ugly Uh Christmas sweater Uh that grandma got you or you know ugly Christmas sweaters (laughs) has become a huge business they They have ugly Christmas sweater parties they do oh my god and there's a company I don't remember the name of it but the bottom line is these guys went from eighty thousand dollars I'm sorry eight hundred thousand dollars in revenue and last year to this year, they've done over three million dollars. Oh my! And they be, they've expanded their line, and they're projecting that next year they will go to eight million dollars. So they from had a ugly Chris, an asset, <laughs> asset. yes, a non tangible <laughs> asset. Hello, <laughs> to, to the, all centered around rebranding mm-hmm. and reselling these ugly That's Christmas right. yeah. sweaters. 
and now they have a, a business that's thriving mm. and they're laughing all the way to the bank. Oh, wow. Go yeah. figure. <laughs> <laughs> we missed know. that one. Yeah. Yes, we missed that one. <laughs> you know, you get something you, you hate and there's no mm-hmm. other word. There's it's It visibly upsets you to look at it. Wow. Mm-hmm. There is a hundred ways to get rid of that thing. Hopefully you got a gift receipt with it. Okay. But mm-hmm. and there are some companies there's some stores that will allow you without a receipt or a gift receipt to come in and exchange for something else or get a gift card for something else okay. or or something at least it, even though they don't have even though you you may have to take whatever price they tell you it, it's worth Gotcha. Um, I mean, that's just the name of the game when you don't have a receipt right. and you mm-hmm. have no proof right. of purchase. Right. It's, you know, nobody's going to just give you whatever because you say so. Right. Because Not they necessarily. don't know how you came by it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that being the case, but I mean, you know, something towards something else you do really love is always, is something. Mm-hmm. It's better than nothing. Mm-hmm. And then there's, you know, in terms of gift cards, I'm not a gamer anymore, so giving me a GameStop, a GameStop right. gift card wouldn't really save me. Don't do that. Don't <laughs> so, give me a card. <laughs> so, no. but, but there are <laughs> websites where you can trade your gift cards for other gift cards that yes. you really love. Mm-hmm. You know, so if you you know you're trying to save up to get a thing that you love from Tiffany, and you get a Sears gift card, and you're not a Sears girl. Exchange that Sears card for for a Tiffany card from through somebody else. Somebody may want that Sears card because mm-hmm. they need to buy a new snowblower. Okay, and so That's right. How about that? Tiffany yes. doesn't have snowblowers, huh? No, apparently oh, not. Wow. Hmm. Crazy. Here's an idea. <laughs> Gold lady. Oh wow! Hey. No, uh-uh. that's more Neiman's. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, yeah. yeah, there's like the gift you can do uh, your trades on gifting. You can sell your gift cards on eBay. Mm-hmm. You can, there's like a hundred ways to get, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I'm sorry. And then also Mm -hmm. in terms of re-gifting, there's sort of this negative connotation with, oh, it's bad to re-gift something. But honestly, if you know someone who could really benefit better from the Mm -hmm. gift or you know that they would really love it, there is nothing wrong with re-gifting it. And also you could donate it. I mean, this time of year, charities are doing all types of fundraisers. There's always coat drives and toy drives. And so there's no need to waste. You can always donate or do something other with the gift if you Mm -hmm. don't like it. Tweet that there's nothing wrong with Regifting, not at all, not at all. And then our final tip is to be thankful. Be thankful for whatever it is that you receive during the holiday season, um, because again, that's it's not just about what someone can give you. Um, just be thankful. I mean, it's you know somebody took time out of their day mm-hmm. and time out of their life, and time is valuable and went out and found you something that they yes. felt was going to be special to That's you. That's right. And so respect that. Yes. yes. I mean, I'm holding on to things with tags on it because I'm respecting that. But, <laughs> <laughs> you know. We, we got to get you out there and trading and donating. donating. Oh, that's yeah. right. Yes. Oh, I'm an eBay queen, so that's no deal. You know, it's just, you know, when your mom buys you something and she took time out of her day to buy, you know. Mm-hmm. And now we know where it You may from. never wear it. <laughs> but it's, and now yeah. she knows. Yes, now the, mm-hmm. the entire maybe she knows, knows, maybe she doesn't. 115 nations now. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes. But it's, you know, it's just that, 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 you know, that thoughtfulness that'll, you know, and gratitude. And we know gratitude is a huge thing spiritually. Yes. Mm-hmm. And sometimes just being grateful is bigger than the whining about the gift. That's mm-hmm. true. Mm-hmm. You know. It's, it's a good way to make sure you don't get something else is to be ungrateful. Oh, yeah. Right. Right. Yes. Right. It's, yeah. And also it's in general gifting is something that people are doing out of, you know, the goodness of their heart or goodness of their spirit, I hope. I mean, I know there's some people who just feel pressed mm-hmm. yes. to run out and buy people mm-hmm. things for whatever mm-hmm. the political reasons are right. or, you know, the, 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 the mother-in-law, the father-in-law, whomever, and may not like them, but let me just go out and get something so they can't say I didn't do it. Okay, yes. You know, and that's all, mm-hmm. we all have these sort of, like, obligated situations. But at the same time, I mean, it's still time out of somebody's day. And it's mm-hmm. money out of somebody's pocket. And so, you know, yes. smile and say thank you. Okay. It's better right. to give than to receive. So we'll leave it at that. Okay. <laughs> All right. 
Great. So I think that's a good segment. Um, we're going into the Christmas season. The next time we see you, we will be right there. We're knocking on the door. Mm-hmm, that's right. <laughs> so um, you've been in retail for quite some time. What kind mm-hmm. of madness do you want to warn us against? As those last minute yeah. purchases. You know, I got to bring this up because now the shift is from Black Friday to other days. So it's, it's gone to mm-hmm. before Black Be- Friday. Yes, yeah. thank you. They yeah. started playing Christmas music two weeks ahead of Black Friday. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, but Thanksgiving now is Thanksgiving. is supposedly a great day mm-hmm. to get deals on certain things. Mm-hmm. Yes. The the Wednesday uh, before. Is a good day for certain things. Yes. The you, Tuesday after. But you got Cyber Monday. Cyber is what you're Monday. Referring to. Cyber, Cyber Monday, Monday is typically and then when you shop online. Also, yeah. there's small business. Um, what small is that? Small business Saturday. Which small business be, Saturday. I, th- I thought it's, it was the 22nd. Actually, it's actually the 29th, so it's okay, the Saturday it's following Thanksgiving. And there's a billion small businesses to support. You can go on Etsy mm-hmm. and you can mm-hmm. buy from people's small businesses, and you'd be amazed at how many fabulous handmade mm-hmm. pieces you can get on a, a website like Etsy and you're supporting somebody's small business nurturing you know who, that they're nurturing and working at mm-hmm. and I sort of love that and love that idea well, of like it's quality and, and they have attention to detail so they right. want it to be right mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. and you know obviously this is somebody who's passionate about the thing that they're sending to you and so I mean I think that's an option also it's not going to look like something everybody else has mm-hmm. which you know, which walk, is great. Isn't yeah, it? Okay. walking around looking like a clone is not cool. Okay, so you're recommending Etsy. Any other websites? Uh, Fiverr. Fiverr. Fiverr.com. Fiverr. Com. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. Right. F-I-V-E-R-R.com. Yes. Mm-hmm. Love Fiverr.com. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And again, it's just about it, those the things that you will purchase from those types of sites. They're just more personal. Right. They feel more personal. They're not so generic. You know, running to the department store and buying whatever the latest. Mm-hmm. thing is right. mm-hmm. so. and you can also go to places like Kickstarter mm-hmm. and go find me and and look at what ideas and businesses people are starting that you can sow That's into right. and oftentimes right. they will give you something yes. as a result I, I did that and a young lady made a shirt for me and I mean it was the coolest thing when I got the shirt knowing as you said that she had personalized it for me for supporting her business mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So we got about two minutes. Well, you're the eBay queen. Yeah. Well, I am. And this is what I'm going to tell you. To, to One of my secrets with eBay is know how much you're going to spend for the item. So if it's, if you're, and then know what the item is. If it, you see a dress that you really love, know who that designer is. If it's an Oscar de la Renta, 19, circa 1965, you know you're getting a real Oscar de la Renta piece versus you purchasing um, something that's not quite um, as expensive and you need to know what the pricing is going to be on that or about what the pricing is and then make the decision on what you're going to pay because that's mm-hmm. going to save you a lot of drama. Yes. yes. Okay. So when you go into, especially going into auction, right. when you're going to go into auction, know what you're going to pay and only put that in. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Don't get emotionally involved in the auction. And do People not come back up. and start bidding over because you will right. ruin your bank account in 10 minutes flat. Hello. <laughs> okay, well, we're going to so talk, we're gonna talk <laughs> more about eBay auctions and, and get more tips from our fashionistas. And lions and tigers and, and, and bears. bears next month. And so we do want to thank you for joining us yes. here. And remember, you know, holiday season is coming up. Be safe. Be smart. Be Be healthy. healthy. Bye-bye.